Oh, no. Yeah, Pop. Well, has been telling me about his... You've got... Um, uh, he's doing these two plays. Oh, tell me, give us a little clue as to the plot of uh, the one you said was about violence and various... Oh, well, my play in London is about... In 1819 in England, ten people tried to murder the whole of the British cabinet. Murder them. Mm -hmm. Like murdering the whole of the, you know. And uh, what they didn't know was that the leading conspirator was a government agent, shall we say, a CIA man. He gave them all the money, all the grenades. They couldn't figure out how you murder the whole of the British cabinet at once. So they put an announcement in our famous uh, newspaper, The Times, that there was going to be a, me uh, a dinner held by the whole of the British cabinet. There was no such dinner. All the poor fellows went along there. They were all arrested, and every one of them was hung, drawn, and quartered. That's what the play is about. Vanessa Redgrave is playing the leading uh, conspirators there. The so agent lured them into that. Too. Forty-five actors I've got in that cast. So one day, uh, I went from seeing the first run through of my own play, right, with 45 actors. Mm -hmm. Then I go to, um, as an actor now, to Harold Pinter's play, Old Times, in which there are only three of us, in which I play a man who gets drunk and is worried about the relationship of his wife and her best friend. Then in the evening, this is why I'm so tired, because I haven't slept for five days with that damn strike at London Airport. Yeah. In the evening, I had to go to Shepperton Studios and finish off little bits of Lord Randolph Churchill. Oh, how do you know? Listen, I'm not asking for pity, because I know <laughs> businessmen have to do this and all sorts of other yeah. people have to work very hard, but that's actually what's been happening the last week. I don't know whether it's, which is worse uh, in the acting profession, to have no work or three things at once like that. Uh, it's always paradoxically bad either way. When you're working, yeah. it's terrible because you're usually doing rubbish. And when you're not working, it's worse. If, uh, and then if you're trapped in a play on top of that with somebody you can't stand, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever oh, had many to go on... times, yeah. 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 I, I always pretend that they're my children. You know I've got nine children. Yeah. I always pretend it's my favorite uh, son or daughter, depending upon the sex of the person opposite me. Oh, isn't it kind of embarrassing if they're 50 years old and you pinch no. their cheek? Or no, you, you just look at them as if you like them, like I yeah. am you now. You see, you just look and you smile. <laughs> all you have to do. What have I done? Well, that's well, what I mean. I've played a lot of tricks like that. There's one famous actor I know, but I'm not going to mention because Robert Norton Morley once said to me, uh, you can say anything about actors you like in private, but uh, mm -hmm. there's a limit to what you say in public, and I've stopped that. Well, what, tell us about the one you don't want to mention and what a rat he is. Well, I just pretended he was my eldest son, that's all. So I, yeah. every time I look at him in the picture, I'm smiling away, and it's <laughs> charming. <laughs> Have you ever, has there ever been someone who couldn't stand you and you knew it and you didn't know why they couldn't stand you? Uh, frequently, frequently. Uh, yeah. I know within two seconds now if a woman likes me or not. Mm -hmm. If they like you, they laugh at your jokes. If they don't like you, they never do. That's my absolute test. You laughed, you like me, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I always know. And so that's true, I think, yeah. to a great extent. What, what, what if my the, what... wife must hate me. <laughs> <laughs> she never laughs at me. You just realized that not once well, has she I mean, ever... that's a serious right. That's the test. My wife laughs all the time. Well, couldn't you have a humorless woman who loved you? <laughs> and if you did, then you'd never know. I uh... suppose it'd be a great relief. Yeah. How are your apples? Well, I've moved. That's an old American expression. Yeah, no, uh, you have an apple orchard, I know. Yes, you do. Uh, Richard once came to uh, dinner with me in England at my house, and, and uh, I loved gardens, so we planted three and a half thousand apple trees. But I've uh, left England, and I now live in Ireland. Uh, and right on the west coast, you can't see another single house from where we live, and we have 75 acres oh, there. Because I have nice. to retreat from these American television raids and, uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, coming into cities. I've, I've grown to hate cities, to be serious. And uh, there, you can't see anything. And it's the, it's the last unspoiled coastline in, um, in Europe. It, it, we have this house where there's a lake, and they caught a 16-pound trout, brown trout, there, unpolluted, on Sunday. And there's 50 miles of this lake goes as far as, you know, you can't, on, on a misty day, you can't see the mountains, and you cannot see another single house, and the drive is one mile. Oh, sounds, and in Ireland besides. But you have to kill yourself doing two movies and two plays to constantly to pay for that. Right. And you're not there now. 
No, I'm not there now. There's uh, three Irish fellows, hope, uh, you know, helpfully and hopefully they're not members of the IRA because I'm a perfect hostage. I mean, you know, I am English and right. maybe they've burned it up right now for all I know, but I hope not. Anyway, Don't we should get out ideas. of Ireland, by the way. You English should get out of Ireland. I think we should get out of Ireland. Uh, well, I hate to side with one of the Kennedys, but... Um, yeah. You know, he closed yeah. a great stir right. in England. And, uh, yeah, they, they... Oh, they hate, but they won't, they won't listen. Actually, I think we're doing more harm by staying than good. It's going to be murder, bloody, awful murder. It is a terrible situation. Yeah. But the south of Ireland is ruined economically now. All the hotels are closing. Americans think that it's all one island. And it was OK, you they know, the south. They think violence is everywhere. But it's creeping into the south. They rob the banks, pretend that they are IRA men, you know. Sorry, we're cut off for this message. We'll be right back.